In this video, I'm going to show you all the steps it takes to get this bad boy approved and in the ground. Now, I've actually done quite a bit of work since we installed the septic system. To talk about the approval process to get the um, septic system ready for installation, we have to go back. Back to when this was this. A blank canvas. So step one, choose where you want your house to go and choose where you want your septic system to go. After you choose your house site, you need to get a soil test and more importantly, a permeability report for the site where you want the septic system. We paid $800 for the soil test and the permeability report. Um, work, worked out to be about $400 for each test. So they tested the house site um, soil for the building and then they tested the area over there for the septic system. I spoke to a few different septic companies in the area and I settled on the one that was the most responsive um, and you know, had the best customer service. Uh, once I had the permeability report, I gave that to the septic system company. They came out and they did a HSTP report, which basically just outlines where the septic system will go, uh, if there's any leach fields, where those fields will go, um, and basically gives you like a, a report that you can then use to get your council approval. That HSTP report from the septic company cost $770. You don't have to engage the same company that did your HSTP report to install your septic system, but uh, in this case I did. I went with the same company that did um, the report for me. Uh, once I got the report done, I was also able to get a quote for the septic system install. Now the system we got was a Talex Tall 400 system, and uh, that was quoted at $11,589. Once I got the HSTP report back from the septic company, I decided to go with a private certifier to um, assist with our council approvals because the people who I've chatted to in the area who have done similar projects to us said that they deal with council directly and it wasn't a very nice experience for them. The private certifier quoted me $4,582 and they're responsible for approving the house plans and um, you know, getting all the documents uh, for the plumbing approval um, together to send to the council. Uh, and a part of that fee included $300 worth of admin for the plumbing. Basically anything that has plumbing, they put a little dot on the plan um, to also get your house plumbing approved. Uh, and then I also had to give my HSTP report to the um, private certifier. He also sent that with the plumbing application to council for approval. Council application amount for the plumbing approval, which included the approval for the house plumbing and the septic plumbing, was about $1,800. It was pretty crazy to find out that it was $1,800 for council to have a look at some, some plans and put an approval stamp on it. This is a standalone system that's not connected to any main infrastructure. So to, to basically have to pay $1,800 for a stamp, I thought was pretty outrageous. The council application cost for plumbing does change council to council. I was told that council would take uh, about three weeks to approve the plumbing application, but luckily ours got approved less than two weeks after it was sent by the private certifier. Once council approves um, all the plumbing application for the house and the septic system, they send that back to the private certifier, and then he supplied me with all the documents stamped with his stamp, signing off all the build to approve the location where we want to build, and also approving all the plumbing. Once you have the plumbing approval from council, you have to then send that to the septic company that you're going to use to install your septic system uh, and start organizing an install date and uh, paying a 10% deposit for the system. After they've installed the system, you then pay the balance, the other 90% of the job. Let's rewind a little bit to um, show you guys the installation process. It was uh, surprisingly fast uh, and uh, the guys that did the install were very efficient at it. I was quite shocked at how quick the whole process was for the installation of the septic system itself. Good morning. Tomorrow we are getting our septic system installed. A lady from the septic company gave me a call yesterday and asked me to put a star picket into the ground where we want the system to go. So we're just out at the house site now. We're just going to pick a spot for our septic. By tomorrow afternoon we should have a septic tank in and all installed. I need to set up a power box here where our house power is. I've got an electrician who'll come out and set up a, a pole with a box and some um, circuit breakers in there to run power from our house site box to the septic system. Today is septic install day. A truck has just arrived to deliver some gravel. They're going to line the bottom of the hole where the septic tank will go. So about nine o'clock the next truck will come with the excavator and they will start digging the hole that the septic tank will go into. It's 
Septic tank is here! Holy moly, that's a big tank. Let's go up Papa. He's still back at the house. He's still digging. It can process 1500 litres of water a day. Let me get a shot of the first real decent test of the COVID since we've done the driveway. Not too bad. Needs a little bit of a fix up there. That's a pretty quick process. The digger arrived about 11.30. It's now one o'clock, so about an hour and a half. He's dug the hole, they brought the septic tank in and lowered it into the ground and started putting some dirt back in around the septic tank. Unreal. He is a very fast excavator operator. The next step is water. Yeah, so about 6,000 litres of water get pumped into here, literally just to hold it down in case it rains so the tank doesn't float out of the ground. That covers off getting the septic system approved and in the ground. Once it's actually installed, it's still not ready to go yet. So I still have to connect it up to power. There's um, some cables in the box that an electrician has to connect up to the, to the grid. And then once we have a, a, a toilet actually plumbed up to it, the septic system company will come out and they will run a little trench down here and put uh, a leach field, which is where all the, the um, filtered effluent uh, water will come out, which is you know, good for uh, your grass and your fruit trees and stuff like that. Yeah, so those costs aren't in this video because I don't really know what they are yet because I haven't gotten that far with the build yet. As I was editing this video, I realized I forgot to talk about composting toilets because that was an option that we were looking into. Composting toilets, about two and a half grand each. We would have needed two of those and then a grey water system. When I started looking into it and having a chat to a few plumbers in the area, they said that getting a composting system through council is okay, but what's more difficult, and with how close we live to our waterway and our dam, uh, getting a grey water system would have been really hard to get past council and approved by council. I'm not going to go into the comparisons between septic tanks and composting toilets because Tom from Homestead on the Rock did a really good comparison video on that. He ends up have, choosing a septic system in the future. But the rationale uh, was basically the same as me. We decided to spend the extra, what, four or five grand and just have facilities to be able to have a proper flushing toilet and um, you know, all the grey water um, can go into that septic tank as well. If you're looking for a comparison between composting versus septic, I'll link his video down below and let's get back to it. Now, we did actually have to deal with council directly for a part of this um, septic system. We did have someone on our street complain about the proximity of it to our waterway. Um, now it is within allowed um, limits and distances. I, I made sure that it was um, it was all good. Council approved it. Yeah, they told the lady, "Look, we approved the system. From what we can see, it looks like it's all been installed properly and it's far enough away from the waterways." But as a part of the complaint, council said they had to come out and inspect the system themselves, take a photo of it and close off the complaint. Uh, that was a bit annoying. I had two guys come out from council. It's not very fun having people poke around when you've done everything by the book um, and you know that everything's fine anyway. Another thing you'll notice is that after they fill in the hole, we had all the dirt mounted up into a big pile here. We've since sort of flattened it out as, much, as best we can uh, as we're going to sort of um, you know, develop this area in the future. You do need to keep adding dirt and fill to this area as it does sink down. They don't, they don't compress it when they um, backfill it. So you do have to keep putting dirt in there. I've just used the tractor and I've just been dumping dirt in there. It still needs a little bit more here on this end here, as you can see around the side here is looking pretty good, um, starting to firm up. But it, is, uh, it does get very soft and it turns into a bit of a sinkhole. Um, and that's just something you need to be aware of. I think it was elbow deep in that section there after the first rain. So that's something to keep in mind. You will have to keep backfilling this uh, area until it's all compacted again. If you found this helpful, don't forget to give it a like and a subscribe. If you have any questions, chuck them in the comment section below. But thanks for joining us in the book, and I'll catch you in the next one.